The picture you see on the board right now is a speaker. This could be a big speaker that you see in the gymnasium, or it could be a tiny little speaker inside an earbud. doesn't matter. The technology is the same. The scale is different. That's all. Now, how does a speaker work? A speaker does not get sound signals and then magnify it. A speaker receives electrical signals from the radio or from your iPhone or whatever it is that's producing the sound or generating the sound. The electrical signals are related to the sound that, that we want to hear. If it's a digital file, like it is in most cases now, say on an iPhone, these series of ones and zero, these little bits, correspond essentially to electric currents. And those electric currents that are coming out of the, the headphone jack on your iPhone are constantly changing. Sometimes they're going this way, sometimes they're going this way, sometimes they're going stronger this way or stronger that way. That current is always changing. But as it goes out the speaker jack, it goes through wires and it goes into a coil in this speaker. You can see that at this moment on this speaker, you have an electric current that's going this way. So it's up in the front and then down in the back of this coil and around like this. Now, one-tenth of a second later, the current may be going in the other direction, or it may be going in the same direction, but stronger. At this moment, however, the current is this way. Now, we can figure out what the polarity of this coil becomes. It does develop a polarity, right? We would say, take your, your coil again that you made on Friday, your fingers would point up in the front because the current is going up in the front down in the back. Fingers would go up in the front. Thumb goes to the right. That means the magnetic field inside this coil goes this way. This ends up being a north, and this ends up being a south. For the time being, if the current reverses direction because the electrical signal that was generated by the music file changes, then maybe the magnetic field goes in the opposite direction. But at this instant, this is the direction of the magnetic field. Now, Surrounding this coil, we see a permanent magnet. What's going to happen to that permanent magnet? It's either going to be attracted or repelled. If it's attracted, it will pull, it will come back, and it will pull with it this cone. This cone that oftentimes is made out of a felt material or a cardboard material, it pulls back this cone with it. If it pulls back the cone, it leaves in its wake this small area of low pressure. There's less air there, or there's more volume, same amount of air, so it's a low pressure zone. If it repels it and pushes the magnet forward because the polarity is reversed, then that pushes the cone forward with it and creates an area of high pressure. So as this electrical signal changes, causes the polarity of this coil to reverse and increase and decrease in magnitude, it's going to cause the permanent magnet, and therefore the cone, to go back and forth, sometimes stronger, sometimes weaker, sometimes one way, sometimes the other way, creating these high-pressure zones and low-pressure zones and stronger high-pressure zones and weaker low-pressure zones and so on. Now you've got a bunch of air pressure, like high-pressure and low-pressure air zones. What is that? That's sound. Okay, that's sound. In Physics 20, we learned that uh, sound is a longitudinal wave with compressions and rarefactions, high pressure zones and low pressure zones in air. It's exactly what we just generated. The high pressure zones cause your eardrum to go in. The low pressure zones cause your eardrum to go out. And then your brain interprets the movement of your eardrum as a sound. You hear the sound. Does that make sense? It's not actually that crazy hard. You could actually um, fairly easily build a rudimentary speaker. It, it wouldn't be the greatest quality necessarily, but it wouldn't take that much effort to actually build a functioning speaker. Um, now, do you have to repeat this on a test? No, don't study this. Just be familiar with how it works so that if you get some application on a test, um, you're able to work through it a little bit better than you would otherwise. Now, the second one that I have for you is this. What is this one? It could be a bell. Yeah, in fact, oftentimes this could be a, a fire alarm. Hey, ding, 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 ding. When the switch is turned on, right, you pull that fire alarm, the switch turns on, and 
this hammer keeps hitting this bell, and you hear ding, 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 ding. Okay, that's exactly what you hear when you hear a fire alarm, right? Here's a battery up here. This is a three-cell battery with, looks like this. Which end is the negative end? Which end is the positive end? Left is negative, right is positive, okay? That means if we're dealing with the electron current, it's flowing this way from the negative around the positive. That is if the switch is closed, right? You've pulled the fire alarm, the switch is, com the switch is closed, the circuit is completed, electrons start flowing from the negative end to the positive end. They go through this, uh, this area right here to this point that we call a make or break contact. This make or break contact is touching this red conductor right here, which is connected to this purple ferromagnetic material. Okay, that becomes important in just a moment here. So current flows through this black wire, through the make or break contact, through the red wire, through the purple, and then through this black wire again over here, through the coil. Oops. And then around here. What does the electric current do as it flows through the coil? What's the purpose of these coils of wire with the electric current going through it? Yeah, we create magnets. Now, with the way that this is drawn, it's pretty difficult to determine the polarity, right? Impossible, in fact, I think. But it doesn't really matter. Let's assume that this is north and south, north and south. If it was reversed, it wouldn't really matter. We'd get the same effect. When the current flows through these coils and makes two new electromagnets with distinct polarities, what is it going to do to this purple ferromagnetic material here? Yep. It's going to attract it, right. As it attracts this purple ferromagnetic material, it also attracts, it also pulls to the right what? The hammer. This hammer comes with it. Okay, as it pulls it towards the electromagnet, the magnet gets pulled, sorry, the hammer gets pulled to the bell, and the hammer hits the bell and goes ding. One ding. Okay, it's not a very good fire alarm yet. Okay, if this was our fire alarm and that's it, then we have to listen very carefully all the time because it would go ding, and then you'd have to go outside. But it doesn't go ding. It goes ding, 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 ding. How does it repeat? Well, when, it, when we pull this purple ferromagnetic material over by these new electromagnets, what does it do to this red conductor? This red conductor that's attached to the purple ferromagnetic material. Ben? Pulls it with it, right. So what happens to this make-break contact between this green make-break contact and this red wire? It disconnects it. What happens to the electrons that were flowing around this circuit? They can't flow anymore. They stop flowing. The circuit is shut down. Now what happens? No electricity flowing through. What happens to the electromagnets? They stop being electromagnets. Now they're just coils of wire with nothing going through them. There's no magnetic effect now. What happens to this purple ferromagnetic material and this red wire that's now no longer in contact with the make-break contact? It comes back. In fact, you can see a little spring here that pulls it back, that helps pull it back. So now, as the spring pulls it back, the make-break contact, the green part, is now again, once again in contact with the purple part. The circuit is complete again. Electrons start flowing, go through the wire, go through the purple, go through the, the uh, coils, magnetize the coils again, go around. What happens to the purple ferromagnetic material? Pulled to the right. What happens to the red wire? Pulled to the right. What happens to the hammer? Pull to the right, you hear another ding. Circuit is now broken again because red is not touching green anymore. Spring pulls it back, repeats the whole thing several times per second. So that now what you're hearing is not ding, but rather now what you're hearing is ding, 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 several times per second. Yep. So the purple, the domain, do they line up? Do they line up? 